This time on Early Years in Action, we're focusing on the learning environment. In Lewisham LEA, South London, Kim Scott has made the learning environment central to her role as Early Years Advisor and co-authored a book on how to develop a stimulating learning environment. The physical learning environment has a huge influence on learning. It gives children clear messages about how we value them and how we value their learning. Here at Lewisham LEA, we've been making learning environments a priority. In this programme, Kim visits Forster Park School and offers some handy tips on how best Helen Runnels and Ruth Marley can develop a highly stimulating yet low-cost learning environment. Kim is going to focus on their small world area, indoor and outdoor role-play zones and outdoor den making. After today's session, she'll lead them for a couple of weeks before returning to see how they've put them into practice. Wow, Ruth, this Hiya. looks so stimulating. But firstly, Kim looks at a video showing how the classrooms are currently being used. So that's the role-play area in your classroom, is that right? Yeah, that's right. A lot of the resources there don't seem to be commercially produced ones. They seem to be things that have been homemade. As a class, we sat down and we thought about all the different things that we wanted to put in the area, and then we made them together. I think that's really important that you gave the children the ownership of that, and it was their choice. And I really like the way you've got that interest table, because I can see you know, there's things to support children's literacy skills, there's books that they can access. We try and put as many resources in there that the children can use as possible, so they can just go and use them independently. I really love the way you've organised those uh, graphics tools there, Ruth, because as well as children being able to find exactly what they want there, it's really supporting their math skills. They're particularly successful when tidying up, the children can see when a pot's missing. <laughs> I love that child. Look at his tongue going out. He's so involved in what he's doing there. Uh, what a brilliant idea. Um, that's your writing area, your graphics area. With my teaching assistants, I did turn into a car because, especially the boys, were reluctant to use the writing area and making it into a car entice them in. So it was really linking it to something that they were interested in then. Yeah. And yeah. that's the way in, isn't it, to getting children excited about their learning. So we can see from that that you're providing some really high quality learning experiences there for the children. What is it that you wanted me to help you with? We're always kind of talking about our classrooms and trying to come up with new ideas and we just wanted you know, a fresh perspective on them really. OK, well let's go and have a look at the classrooms. Where are we going first? Uh, if you come into my classroom first. If we start over here, this is where we keep a record of their birthdays. So we've got a birthday, two birthday cupcakes, and we move their names across as they move from four to five. That's great because that's really helping them to recognise their names, isn't it? But also really supporting their self-esteem. Yeah. Great. What have you got over here, these models? Uh, this was when we were doing about a book with a monster in. We recorded their speech in speech bubbles. And having that on display there really shows how much value you're giving to the things that they're making. Yeah. And, and also parents then could come and see that too, can't yeah. they? Yeah. Um, tell us about what you've done with these drawers here, Helen. On each of the drawers we've got a label saying what's inside the drawers. It means that they're not reliant on an adult and they have a bit of ownership. Yeah, and that's so important, isn't it? If we want to develop really independent learners, we need to make sure that as much as possible they can go off and be able to access things mm. and put them away independently. So what is it that you'd really like to develop in your classroom? Right, here's this small world area. This is what we've been working on. But I do want to move it on from here a bit because I'd like to get some writing opportunities to come from the small world as well. What, what are children in your class really into at the moment? Well, recently we've been making a lot of maps in the role play area. So that's okay. something they like. Well, I think we could really develop that in the small world yeah. then. Um, I mean, the whole maps idea would link in really well with cars and then get lots of different texts in linked to cars and maps so that really children are drawn in to get involved with it, but wherever they go, they can't help. There's writing opportunities that are hopefully really going to yeah. get them excited about writing here. Hi, Ruth. Hiya. Hi. So this is your classroom? Yes, this is my classroom. OK. Um, talk us through some of the things that you've been developing in here, then. Um, at the minute, the children are really into space and aliens and stuff, so we've had that out today. This is our small world. Right. Um, that's just some wallpaper paste with some snakes. Very popular with the boys at the minute. It's a really, really gunky, isn't it? Yeah. Um, what you can do in these sort of trays as well is really support children's fine motor skills. So you might just add things in here like small scoops and things like that. And lots of the tiny pouring in that really gets children to concentrate and focus and really develops those fine motor skills for them. Okay. 
You've got sand tray over here. Yeah. Children like putting small animals in there, um, dinosaurs, sand wheels. I mean, the sand is fantastic um, for supporting maths. What's really nice is that idea of burying things in there for them to find. And then if you give children special boxes um, or baskets that they can hold, they can dig around, count out the things as they find them, match them to labelled objects and things like mm. that. So what is it that you'd really like to develop in your classroom, Ruth? We change our role play area every half term, and it's coming up to half term now. Um, it, it was a school, however, it's become quite tatty now. Our new topic is plants and animals, and I wanted to do a gardening centre. Right, and I think that would be great. You've got a nice large space here. So what we really need to think about is how we can support all six areas of the foundation stage curriculum here. So for example, for PSE, um, if it's a garden centre, we might be thinking about the reasons people send flowers. Obviously the links to knowledge and understanding the world, the science and the growing and everything mm -hmm. are huge here. Yeah. Um, literacy. I could get some non-fiction books on plants great. and growing. We'll get the measuring plants and we'll get the maths and the money as well out of this area. Right, OK. Look okay. forward to it. So sometimes resources can be a bit limited for outdoor, so it's important to look at what you've got already and see how we can inject a bit of extra life into that. You've got things like pop-up tents and they're great, but commercial resources sometimes just don't have that longevity of resources that mm. children have made with you. So I think it might be good to get just um, some garden canes and things mm. like that, loads of masking mm. tape to actually make some dens themselves. I see you've been doing a bit of uh, role play out here. Is this an ambulance? Yes. Yeah. yeah, OK, and it's nice you've got the costumes and that. I think role play takes on a whole different dimension when it's outside, doesn't it? Because it can really uh, be on a much larger scale, children can be physically active, and we can make really good use of things like the bikes that you've got over there. Yeah. And what I really like to do is really link them into your role play. So maybe if we looked at something like pizza delivery okay. or something like that, um, we can get boxes, mm -hmm. tape them on to the front of the bikes, and straight away you've got a section you can have your pizza mm -hmm. boxes in there. I can see you've got this kind of open playhouse as well, which mm -hmm. children have obviously been uh, playing out here. It would be really nice to give this a real focus and tie it in with the role play, because mm -hmm. it, it would provide a perfect base for a pizza restaurant, really, wouldn't it? Pizza place just up the road. We could go there and get some boxes yeah, and we leaflets could ask and things. Them for some, yeah, some menus. Fantastic. We? So we'll get loads of literacy, loads of reading and writing there, and maybe they'll make some real pizzas inside with you and make their own recipe books from mm -hmm. that. After some helpful hints from Kim, Helen's going to look at her small world area and incorporate some writing opportunities by focusing on something the children are really interested in. Ruth is going to focus on her role play zone, trying to develop all six areas of learning. And making sure that the learning opportunities don't just remain indoors, Helen and Ruth are going to utilise the large space outdoors for den making and a pizza delivery role play. Well, it's been three weeks now since we left Helen and Ruth to develop their environments. I think that's plenty of time, so let's go and take a look and see how they've got on. Wow, Ruth, this Hiya. looks so stimulating. You've worked so hard on this. It's lovely, isn't it? Fantastic. Tell me about what you've been doing here. Um, we've had the children making flowers. I got a lot of the flowers from Pound Shop. So it's all been, it's all been really quite cheap. I think it looks fantastic. Just those real baskets yeah. and that trellis yeah. there really make it visually so yeah. exciting. And I love the little dragonfly lights you've got yeah. draped along there as yeah. well. Put some PSE in. Ask the children why, send people flowers, we've got goodbye cards, birthday cards. They take the one they want, fill it in, do some more writing and then mm -hmm. give them with their, with their flowers. flowers to people. Yeah. And you've got loads going on over here around the counter as well. We've got opening times, leaflets, order forms, brochures. It's That's an amazing everything. place. Yeah. You just want to get in here and yeah. play, don't you? And I love the way that you've got so many really good quality signs here with pictures which also show children what to do. Fantastic job, Ruth. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Oh, this looks amazing. Yeah. Uh, tell me about what you've been doing here. Well, basically, we've collected lots of resources. Uh, we've got maps here, which we've just got old ones that people were throwing away. We've got some brochures from car showrooms and also some storybooks. And uh, what about these? Tell me about these. Well, this was to try and encourage them to write. So we've got accident reports, parking tickets and parking fines. So what we've been doing with the children is we draw the maps onto the 
paper. Right. Then we play with them with the cars, and then if they park in the wrong place, they have to write a ticket. <laughs> if they bump into each other, they have to write an accident report. They're not just, you know, playing with the cars on here. OK, that looks absolutely brilliant. This is incredible. What a transformation. It was fairly cheap. We got the pizza boxes, which we actually ate ourselves. <laughs> OK. Um, a lot of it's come from home. They're picnic glasses. What a brilliant idea. I mean, children will love this. They'll feel so grown up with a proper stemmed yeah. glass. But they're actually yeah. plastic picnic glasses, so they're safe. Yeah. What about um, these, uh, these chips in here? They look really realistic. Oh, no, that's a car sponge we cut up. OK, what a brilliant idea. Bikes have been used, which are ours already. And what we've done is we've just attached the boxes to the front and labelled them. This is the office yeah. part of the pizza cafe, is it? Menus over here, which they've been using, um, they're just menus we've collected from takeaway places. We've also got some order forms, so they can fill out forms when people call on the telephone. I must say, it just looks the sort of place that you just can't wait to get into and play. Amazingly, Helen and Ruth have only spent £40 in total on their class transformations, managing to gather most of the resources from local businesses and parents for free. But what's really important is whether the children like it. There's some pens there. Oh, you've started the road. Well done, Michael. That's good. That's where the police thing. Oh, oh, no, you just punched into me. Right, you better write that, a report. You right. write your name and I'll have a All right, you write your name there. Would you like to write Yes, Yes. How much do these cost? Oh, Six P. There we go. Oh. Hey. Is this the garden centre? Yes. Oh, I love some flowers. Can you help me? Yes. There's some two flowers that you like. You like the pink one and the orange one. I'll have the pink ones, please. When will they be ready? Um, just a minute, please. Oh, OK. Did you buy it? Um, it's fantastic how children can really get into their role here and how motivated and excited they are as well. And I see over here, we've got this garden design centre where children have been drawing out their own garden designs and then choosing from all the different types of materials here. The children working here are just so absorbed and motivated and this is supporting them in nearly all of the early learning goals. What's really great about this new environment out here is how well these children are using it and working together. Um, it's really developing their language. There's been loads of opportunities for children to write. There's been lots of mathematical opportunities. Children have been counting out money. Hi guys. Hello. Hello. This looks like you're having great fun here. So tell me what you're doing. Making a tent. A tent? Yes. Fabulous. And how are you going to fix this together here? Uh, in the oh. Too oh, hard. Think... It's too hard. Is it very hard to it make? Out. We're going to figure it out. We're going to figure it out. You're going to work it out. OK, you're doing a fantastic job. The learning environment is hugely important. But as we've seen today, developing a stimulating environment doesn't have to cost the earth. All it takes is a bit of imagination and a little hard work. <laughs>